Oh, hey guys, what are you up to? Oh, hey. I'm just, uh, making a color palette for my new video game. That's all just green. Oh, well, fuck you, too! You know, I didn't go to grad school to be called a washer. Do you know how much I've sacrificed?! Well, Seeds, what are you up to? I'm working on a color palette for my new video game. Well, it's all just red. It's the blood of my enemies. Oh, do you guys... You, listen, you're doing this all wrong. Why don't I teach you about color palettes? Follow me! So, um... Uh, you guys are kind of supposed to, um... Follow me. The use of color palettes, especially limited color palettes, in pixel art games can be a great way to add some style and flair to your artwork. However, creating a color palette can be pretty difficult, so that's what we're going to walk through today on this episode of Hybrid Theory. So if you're familiar with games like Gato Roboto, Gun Rounds, uh, or really just any Game Boy game, which Game Boy games only used four colors total, then you're familiar already with limited color palettes. Using a small color palette can really help drive a smaller sized pixel art game, and it can really help make some of your graphics stand out a bit more and just kind of add some, some style rather than kind of muddying down the whole game with a ton of different colors and values. Having just a set color palette can be a really great way to make everything pop. So to start us off, why don't we take a look at what I think is a pretty good representation of what a beginner pixel artist's uh, first color palette would most likely look like, which would pretty much be this right here. So what a beginner pixel artist is most likely to do is just pick every major color on the color spectrum, choose dark and light values for each across the board, and they're pretty much done. But if you saw my last pixel art video, then you know that, uh, well, you know two things. Number one, you know that I preach that less is more, meaning that the less colors that you can work into your spectrum, uh, the more creatively colored sprites you're going to have in your game. And another thing I talked about was the light and dark spectrum. So in the last video we went over this chart right here which shows that uh, light, lighter colored values are going to bend more towards yellow and darker or colder colors are going to bend more towards purple. So this beginner's palette right here doesn't really apply anymore because what you're seeing is that all of the values stay in the same uh, spot on the color spectrum. So you've got a light purple right here and you've got a dark purple right here, but if I swap between the two of them, that, uh, that our spot on the spectrum isn't moving at all. And as we get lighter, we should start moving more towards yellow. So for purple, it wouldn't be in the yellow, it would probably be more towards something like the red, you know, or, or the pink, the, like hot pink or something like that. So you'd end up having something more like this maybe. So that th uh, theory, that mindset is essentially what is going to carry us through our method of creating our color palette today. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to start with our black and you can use true black if you want but I like to kind of pick a value that's somewhere in here just kind of like a softer black. I just think it gives the game a cool look. That's what I do for Giga Sword. So we're going to stick that just anywhere. We're going to stick that right here. Now let's work with our purples first, but the way that that's actually going to work is we're going to start with our purples, but that is going to transition into our sort of pinks and our reds, and uh, you'll see what I mean as I start picking colors here. So I'm going to start from here. So again, because we're working with the darker side of the spectrum, we want uh, our colors right now to be tinted towards dark purple or, or blue. So this purple right here is, is good because we're right on that line. So we're gonna, we're gonna choose that one. Now as we get lighter, we are also going to move that away from the blue and we're gonna start moving things towards the pink and red range. And we're gonna just go with this one. This one looks good. We're gonna move it again and move it up. So that's pretty much the way it works. Again, I, if you saw my last video, I talked about the happy art curve. Uh, basically what that means is that I like to pick colors that are sort of in this range right here. Uh, anything other than just this corner, I like to avoid this corner just because it looks so like default, you know? So just anything else around there. So, so as I pick these colors, as you see me uh, get lighter and lighter, I'm going to move in that sort of curve as well as move the spectrum. Remember, we don't want to keep the spectrum in the same place because the hue is shifting towards that yellow as we get brighter. So we're going to pick our lightest value 
and uh, that's gonna be, why don't we do something like this, why don't we kinda really start to bend it, and you know, I think I might actually go back to this and even pick something a bit lighter. Why don't we pick one more, there we go. Now, from my experience, this color right here, we can use as the shading for our red values. As, as we start to add shadow to red, those shadows are going to bend towards purple. So we don't need a, a dark red right now because that dark red is just gonna end up being purple. So this purple is gonna work fine for that shadow for our red values. We're going to do a sort of dark maroon to spread off of that purple. So from there, we're going to bend the spectrum much closer to red. Then we are going to move up a little bit, get a bit brighter, and now we have like our actual red that we would use, you know. So something like that should be good. Then for the lighter red values, we're going to actually get a bit into the orange, not too much, maybe like around there. It takes a lot of trial and error, you know, it takes, it takes a ton of trial and error. And again, there are no, you know, these are guidelines, not rules, so you can pick whatever colors you like best. I've changed these purples just now. I, I just think it makes a bit more sense to have these be a bit further away from the red values. You might see the colors change throughout uh, shots as I continue to mess with these. All right, so now we're gonna move into greens. And when we choose our dark green, what that's actually gonna be is pretty deep into like the teal or, or the, the cyan over here. That's, that's what I like to use. Something like that right there. So we're, we're pretty far into the blue, but it's gonna work out for us. Next, I've got this sort of foresty green color and we're starting it. we're still a bit into the cyan teal, but we're starting to move out of it. We've got two more greens right here. This one is kind of a, so we chose our uh, sort of just basic green right here. And then for the lighter shade, we moved much further into yellow for sort of a lime green. I think I'm gonna move to blues now, so this value I like, and as you can see, uh, this dark green kind of makes for a pretty good uh, shadow for a blue object. We could also use our purple, which would make uh, more sense with the uh, light and dark laws that we have, because obviously if the object is blue, then the shadows are going to be purple, not green. But uh, I kind of just like how this, how these colors sort of play with each other. It gives it a unique look. So we've got a lighter shade of blue right here, and then for our for our last shade will probably be somewhere somewhere in here. Now I'm gonna choose my white, and uh, let's have it be kind of yellow tinted again. Let's not do true white, let's just choose something that's really close. Something like that, just makes it look cool. And that's essentially gonna go at the end of of all of these, you don't have to put it there, but that's kind of, that's what we're looking at so far, is that that is the um, progression of, of each of these color groups. So, so far we've got our red, our purple, our blue, and our green, so we're still missing yellow and orange. Although what I like to do is basically include yellow and orange in the same uh, part of the spectrum. So what I mean by that is we can take yellow, this is pretty much gonna be our main yellow that we use, and any dark yellow that you're gonna have is just gonna end up being orange, and then once you get darker from there, you can actually get into your brown tones and include those as well. So we can have like this color right here, and then we'll bend it up bit more towards orange. So look, boom, right there, we've got our orange, and, and it's just a natural shading progression into that. You get a bit darker, lower the saturation, and you've got your first sort of, this is still pretty orange, but you're kind of starting to get into brown territory right now. So we've got our white on here four times. So really, those are all the colors that we've got so far. Let's count them up. 18, 19, 20, 21. So 21 colors doesn't sound like a lot, right? But we've already got our black, our white, we've got three shades of blue, three shades of green, four if you're counting this part right here, which can basically use, be used for uh, blue and green. We've got our three reds, our three purples, the, the one in the middle that basically combines them for the shadow for that. You've got your yellow, you've got your orange, you've even got two shades that you can use as brown right here. And if you're doing a 24 sized color palette, then you've still got three colors to choose. So now we can choose our grayscales. We can come in here and 
for our dark gray, we can use sort of a purple, uh, a purplish gray. For our light gray, we can bend things towards yellow and pick a lighter value there. I'm gonna choose a gray there and then a yellowish one for the light gray. Uh, we don't want to get too close to that white. Basically, my point with this whole thing is that there's no, there there is no point in choosing in having two colors that are that are that are like very close together because you know if you've got this one shade right here you know like what I was just choosing so this this gray this light gray to the white we don't want that to be too similar because if the light gray is is like this you know and I don't even know if you can see that that difference between those two but you know if that's how close these values are then it's like why even bother like you know if 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 limitation is what you're pushing then just then have that contrast there have have that jump be big it'll look cool so this right here and we could have made these lines anyway i don't know if this is the best way to really organize these why don't we why don't we move them around a bit there we go so so this right here is a, tw a size 24 color palette that pretty much covers all our, our our bases the only thing we're missing right now is skin tones so you know if i were to add that i would just kind of have it branch off of we have our brown so actually we can just branch them off of that i guess you know so you could pick a color like you could pick colors like in here and then you know maybe like one more like that and so now what we've got 26 and that's pretty much everything now despite all this there are still some of you who are saying jack there's no way that i could possibly make an entire video game with just 26 colors I, there's just no way to do it I, I need more values than that and to those people I'd like to show you this. This is a nice diagram of boxes showing you all of the different colors that you can make with the palette that we just created. Up in the purples, you've got dark purple ranging from pink ranging to light pink. You've got your greens that take you from this sort of mossy dark green up to this normal sort of emerald green way up to our lime green. You've got brown morphing into orange, morphing into yellow. You've got your maroon to red. You've got dark blue, almost this sort of periwinkle morphing into blue and then sky blue. Down here we've got our grayscales and then we've got our skin tones right here. And this isn't the full extent of it. I could copy one of these and let's just take this one. And you can play around with this even more. You can make something like this where it's essentially just the same as this block right here only we have used our dark green as the shadow and that just gives us kind of like it looks like we're underwater it's like that kind of mossy deep water sort of look one cool thing is we can take our darkest shade of red right here our dark maroon and then you take your brown and this gives us sort of like this almost like mahogany reddish wood color that would be like this this darker wood looking shade. If you want gold, that's fine. We take our dark yellow right here and you just change the shine on the top, the top value, to white. Make that yellow. It's looking like gold to me. What I'm trying to say is that with a little bit of creativity you can create a ton of colors, or should I say a ton of values, using only a few colors. The biggest thing to remember is still just that spectrum that I showed you guys. The shadows are going to bend towards purple, the lighter values are going to bend towards yellow. If you follow those rules, as you're picking your colors, all the hard work sort of just does itself for you, because you're going to end up working your way across the color spectrum without even trying. So I tried to go over as much as I could about color palettes today. Um, if there's anything that you think I missed, please feel free to comment below and ask me any questions that you have. Creating your own color palette can be kind of a complicated procedure. It's really just the type of thing that takes practice. Um, just You kind of just have to jump in and start doing it. If you want to see more of my personal pixel art, I am making a game that is full of it, and it's called Gigasword. It's an action puzzle metroidvania in which you wield a huge sword that weighs you down. I've been working on it for about two years now, and there have been a ton of recent developments, so if you guys want to stay updated, you can join our Discord server, uh, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to this channel. I'll be posting a lot more about the game in the near future. 
I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons who helped make this show possible. Thank you guys so much for another month of generosity supporting me, supporting the channel. It really means the world. How are those color palettes looking, boys? <laughs> Perfect. And remember, the number one thing that you should do when making art is to always...